Today we're going to talk about one of two very special right triangles. This particular one has a 90 degree angle, of course, because it's a right triangle, a 30 degree angle, and a 60 degree angle. To begin trying to recognize patterns for a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side. So I need to solve for side x, that's a leg, x squared plus root 3 squared equals 2 squared. Remember, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. As we simplify, we get x squared equals 1. And when we square root both sides, we get x equals 1. So this side length right here is 1. Let's solve for b. Here are the legs, here's my hypotenuse. 2 squared plus b squared equals 4 squared. As we solve for b squared, now we're going to square root both sides to get b by itself. b is equal to square root 12, but we can simplify the radical here for square root 12. The biggest perfect square that goes into 12 is 4. 4 times 3 gives me 12. Now evaluate the square root of 4, that is 2, and we drop square root 3. So this side length is 2 times square root 3. And our third one looks like we're solving for the hypotenuse this time. 3 squared plus 3 root 3 squared equals c squared. Remember this is 3 squared times root 3 squared. So 9 times 3. 9 plus 27 is 36. After square rooting both sides, the length of side C is 6. Do you see a pattern? To identify which sides correspond with each of these triangles. I look at the angles and identify the side across from specific angles. So here I have the side that is across from the 30 degree angle. That is equal to 1. Then when that side is 1, the side across from the 60 degree angle is root 3. And when this side here across from 30 degrees is 1, our hypotenuse is 2. Let's check the next triangle. Across from the 30 degree angle is 2. Across from the 60 degree angle is 2 times root 3. And our hypotenuse is 4 this time. The third triangle, across from the 30 degree angle is 3. So across from the 60 degree angle is 3 root 3. And our hypotenuse is 6. Do you have a guess of what my side across from the 60 degree angle and my hypotenuse would measure if this side were 4? We have a pattern. This is called a special right triangle, and it's one of two that we're going to learn about. A 30, 60, 90 special right triangle has the same proportions of its sides as all other 30, 60, 90 triangles. So you know how we had to have two sides of a right triangle in order to solve for the third side? If you know the angles inside of your triangle are 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, then you only need one side. You don't actually need two sides because you don't have to use the Pythagorean theorem. What we're going to use is this pattern right here. The side that is across from the 30 degree angle, we're going to call that x. And every other side will be in terms of x. I like to call this the short side. Why? Because it literally is the shortest side. 
And I know that not just because it looks like the shortest side, because that's not a guarantee, but because it is across from the 30 degree angle. Small angle means shorter side. Big angle means a larger side when it comes to the side across from that angle. In terms of x, the side across from the 60 degree angle is x times root 3. And guess what? The hypotenuse, you may have noticed it above, is always 2 times the short side. So we're going to solve for the missing sides of the triangle below based on the pattern. First, we're going to orient ourselves based off of which side is the short side, which side is across from the 60 degree, and which is the hypotenuse. Our short side is across from the 30 degree angle. And the short side is called x. So guess what? I'm going to put an x here. This side across from the 60 degree angle. This side measures x times root 3. Our hypotenuse measures 2x. So we have been given 5, which is the measure of the short side. The short side is labeled here as x, so x is 5. Now, if we know x, then we know the side lengths of the other sides because we have them in terms of x. First of all, the other leg, the leg that is across from the 60 degree angle, that is going to be x times root 3. And guess what x is? Oh, x is 5. So this side will be 5 root 3. And our hypotenuse is going to be 2 times whatever x is. So x is 5, 2 times 5. Our short leg is 5. Our other leg across from the 60 degrees is 5 root 3. And our hypotenuse is 10. Let's keep using the pattern. Identify the sides. Here is the short leg. That is labeled x. Here is the other leg. That corresponds to x root 3. And our hypotenuse corresponds with 2x. So 16 is 2x. 16 equals 2x. This is how we're going to solve for x. Oh my goodness, x equals 8. We've solved for x. x is equal to 8. That is our short leg. All right, then our other leg is x times root 3. So if x is 8, that would be 8 root 3. And our hypotenuse, oh wait, that was what was given to us. Let's do the next one. The side across from the 30 degree angle is our short leg. That corresponds to x. The side across from the 60 degree angle is our other leg. And that corresponds to x root 3. And our hypotenuse corresponds with 2x. Root 15 corresponds to x root 3. Root 15 is x times root 3. That means equals. So that's how we're going to solve. x root 3 is equal to root 15. Solve by dividing by root 3. This is a special form of the number 1, so x is equal to root 15 over root 3. But if we remember with radicals, we can actually write this as one big square root over the top and the bottom, and that gives us the opportunity to reduce. 15 over 3 is 5, so x is root 5. Our short leg is root 5. That means our other leg, which is x root 3, is going to be root 5 times root 3. Root 15, are there any perfect squares that go into 15? No, there are not. The hypotenuse is always 2 times x. And in this case, x is root 5, so 2 times root 5. That's as far as we can simplify. Across from the 30 degree angle, we have our short leg. This corresponds with x. Across from 60 degrees, we have our other leg. This corresponds to x root 3 in the pattern. Our hypotenuse corresponds to 2x. 
All right, that means 9 corresponds with x root 3. 9 is x root 3. Divide by root 3 on both sides. x, uh-oh, we can't have a root in the denominator, so we've got to rationalize the denominator. To do that, we'll multiply by root 3 over root 3, which is just a special form of the number 1. Remember, you can always multiply by 1. It doesn't change anything. That is equal to 9 root 3 over root 3 times root 3 is 3. Not quite done though because I believe we can reduce this 9 over this 3. What is 9 over 3? 9 divided by 3 is 3 and times that by root 3. So 3 root 3 is our x. So our short leg measures 3 root 3. The other leg is x root 3 x is 3 root 3 and then that has to be multiplied by root 3. Okay, root 3 times root 3 is 3 times 3. But hey, that's the side length they gave us. So we didn't need to technically solve for it again. And the hypotenuse is 2 times x. So if x is 3 root 3, 2 times 3 root 3. The numbers not under the root will be multiplied, so 6, and then that just goes next to root 3. Now I know you see there is an x here. That is not talking about the x that we use to generalize the short side of the triangle. So what I would recommend is that we just uh, switch out this x and call it z, because I don't want us to get confused. This x is the length of the short leg. First of all, is this a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle? Yes, it is, because even though we only have two angles, if this is 90 and this is 60, we know this one is 30 because the angles in a triangle add up to 180. All right, so across from the 30-degree angle, that is my short leg. This corresponds with x. Okay, so I don't have the short leg. Across from the 60, another side that I'm going to have to solve for, and I was given the hypotenuse. Our other side corresponds to x root 3, and our hypotenuse corresponds to 2x. All right, the one you were given is the hypotenuse, so use that to help you solve for x. Then plug it in for your other sides. And there you have the missing leg lengths for these problems.